Hello everybody, my name is Jenan Konjhodzic and I am Product Manager at Instrument Systems. It is my great pleasure to talk about our new calibration standards for the UVA, B and C range. I would like to start with a brief summary of the market trends for UV LEDs. Then I will introduce you to our new UV LED calibration standards of the ACS series. And of particular interest is our innovative calibration concept for radiant flux. Then I will be highlighting the advantages of the new control unit for the ACS models, the ACU100. And finally, you will gain an overview of all currently available ACS models. UV radiation covers an extremely broad wavelength range between 10 and 400 nanometer. According to the ISO standard 21348, it is subdivided into four areas. The UVA range lies between 315 and 400 nanometer. Typical applications are UV curing and UV ink printing. The UV B range lies between 280 and 350 nanometer. A common application is medical skin treatment. The UVC range between 100 and 280 nanometer has currently growing, uh, growing uh, significance due to pandemic situation because it is highly relevant, for example, for water and air disinfection. In addition, there is a vacuum UV range between 10 and 200 nanometer, but uh, due to the strong absorption by oxygen in the air, it is only of minor importance for technical applications. Here I would like to show you the market trends for UV LEDs as presented in the market report 2019 by YOL Development. In 2008, only about 10 companies were manufacturing UV LEDs, but by 2018 this number has already multiplied sixfold. That means to over 65 companies uh, which are producing UV LEDs. The most important applica applications are still UV curing and with growing significance, of course, the disinfection and purification of air and water. So that these numbers will even further increase. The forecast for future market trends called for a doubling of the size of the market in the next five years, in particular in the UVC range. These forecast growth should increase even more than predicted due to recent stricter disinfection regulations in the pandemic situation. Instrument Systems has developed three calibration standards in the ACS series for the three UV ranges A, B and C. The ACS 57024 covers the UVC range. The typical radiant flux lies here between 40 and 60 milliwatt. The peak wavelength at 280 nanometer, and for the models ACS for 570-26 for the UVB range, the typical peak wavelength lies at about 305 nanometer, and for model ACS 570-28 in the UVA range, it is around 365 nanometer. The temporal stability of radiation is extremely good and lies at about 0.2% in 12 hours or about 1% in 100 hours. The most important field of application of the calibration standard is calibration to the radiant flux of UV integrating spheres, for example from our ISP UV portfolio. For this purpose, an absolute calibration value traceable to a national institute must be provided. Hitherto, there neither the PTB nor the NIST have been able to offer a radiant flux calibration for the ranges UVB and UVC. For this reason, Instrument Systems implemented its own radiant flux calibration using a goniophotometer. 
Due to the calibration of the detectors to irradiance, measurements with the goniometer of the LGS series are traceable to the PTB. So, Instrument Systems has earned a worldwide position as a pioneer for radiant flux calibration in the UVB and UVC range. The newly developed calibration concept for radiant flux is as follows. A straylight corrected wide range spectroradiometer, cas 140 d was used as a detector. Straylight correction is particularly important because there is a strong increase in the straylight proportion, particularly in the UV range. An LGS350 was used as a goniometer and ACS570 as a DUT. It was operated with a PSU tank as a control unit. This system setup was traceably calibrated to the irradiance. The irradiance was measured for each solid angle omega and radiant intensity determined by multiplying the square of the distance. The radiant flux phi can be determined numerically by integration of the distribution of radiant intensity over the entire space. So how good is our calibration concept and how do we keep the traceability chain unbroken? The different irradiance calibrations were analyzed prior to measurement itself. In the diagram is the call one corresponds the spectral and absolute calibration with the 1000 watt FEL halogen lamp. This was spectrally extended in the UV range with the deuterium lamp. Another calibration Cal2 corresponds to the spectral and absolute calibration with the deuterium lamp, spectrally extended with 1000 watt FEL halogen lamp. In comparison, the three measurements with uh, the two UVA ACM models and the UVC ACM model show that the measurement in the zero zero position of the goniometer corresponds very well to the calibration on the optical bank. It can thus be concluded that the usual irradiance calibration, means Cal1, in the UV range is adequate for our new procedure. Completed goniometer measurements are a first step towards determining the spatial radiation properties of the UV LEDs. That means the radiant intensity distribution in space. The radiant flux can be calculated therefore from numerical integration. PTB values are available for the two ACM models in the UVA range that are perfect match for our measurement results. <coughs> this shows that our new procedure is also highly suitable for the ACS models in the UVB and UVC range, for which hitherto no calibration or possibilities for comparison were available. I would like to point out that Instrument Systems is the first manufacturer worldwide to offer radiant flux calibration in the UVB and UVC range. Every measurement is susceptible to measurement uncertainty that must be investigated. This means that on the one hand all influencing factors must be identified and on the other hand the system must be set up to ensure the lowest possible values for measurement uncertainty. Essentially, there are two ways of determining measurement uncertainties. One option is to carry out various different measurements from which the influencing variables can be identified statistically, that means deviations for defined measurements. This is usually a tedious process as a large number of measurements are necessary. The second option is simulation, for example with the Monte Carlo simulation. We use the latter to calibration for calibration to irradiance. Many factors of influence are taken into account in the, in the Monte Carlo simulation. This includes the straylight matrix, wavelength measurement uncertainty, temperature variation, CCD noise, power supply and others. All changes to these influencing variables are measured in a simulation and can contribute to overall measurement uncertainty. The simulation can be supplemented experimentally by further calculations, e.g. the measurement of distance, alignment of the optical axis, alignment of the test sample in a transverse direction, angle scanning and, of course, the uncertainties of the goniometer itself. 
The basis for this procedure is the standard GUM procedure, as described in the Guide of the Expression of Uncertainty in Measurement. Finally, the stability of the DOT, that means in our case the ACS calibration standard, also plays a critical role in the determination of measurement uncertainties. Measurement uncertainties are usually stated with the so-called factor k equal 2, that means with a double standard deviation or certainty that with a 95% probability the result lies within the determined range. By our procedure, measurement uncertainties for the radiant flux are very low. In the UVA range at 365 nanometer, they are around 2%, and even in the UVC range, they are only 4.5%. These measurement uncertainties apply to an optimized calibration procedure. That means use of the primary standard for irradiance calibration and the spectroradiometer of the CAS series with the stray light correction. The latter plays a significant role, particularly in the UV range. For this reason, we recommend the creation of a stray light correction matrix for all applications in the UV range. In comparison, however, acceptable measurement uncertainties occur even in the standard procedure without stray light correction. In summary, it can be concluded that measurement uncertainties in the UV range are almost as low as in the visible range. Here again, instrument system is the world leader. A new control unit is also available for the new ACS models. The ACU100 controller is the combined control unit for operation of the LED calibration standards of the ACS series, so to speak, a successor of the previous PUC10. And the power supply to the LEDs is secured up to 15 volt and up to 1 ampere. The temperature, temperature control of the ACS models via Peltier control operates in the range plus minus 21 volt and plus minus 4 ampere. The control software ACS control has been newly engineered. The ACU100 is only approximately of the half size of the previous PSU10 and weighs significantly less. Finally, I would like to show you an overview of all ACS models available. Besides the white ACS570-1, there is the dash 3 model for the blue visible range, dash 5, the green range, and dash 7 in the red range. Instrument Systems also offers calibration standards in the IR range, infrared, with peak wavelengths around 860 and 950 nanometer. In the UV range, there are the three new UV ACS models that cover the UV ranges A, B, and C, as explained in detail in this presentation. Further special calibration standards on LED bases also exist, such as the ACS 5885 or 586 as a luminance standard for the white LEDs. Thank you very much for your attention and all best for you.